Hello, I'm going to try and show you how to smoke some salmon that a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, brought in. It's been caught on the River uh, Dee two years ago. It's been sat in this freezer for two years at the bottom of a large chest freezer. So I'm just hoping that it's okay. But I'm going to give it a shot anyway. We bought these round last night. And you can see these are quite big salmon. One of them is 16 pound and the other one is 9 pounds. So uh, I'm just going to, first of all, see what we've got in the bag. I bet he was a happy chap when he thought that. I think he would have been a seriously happy chap catching that fish. Look at the size of that. I'm pretty happy just holding that. I wish I'd caught a fish like that. That's fantastic. Good Scottish sound. Well, here's this 16 pounder. Still a bit frozen. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fill it that one tonight. Um, and here's the other one. Another respectable, very respectable nine pound salmon. I'm just trying not to drip all over the kitchen floor. Otherwise the wife will be none too plussed. What I'm going to do now is try and fill it this uh, smaller of the two fish. Um, I think it's pretty well thawed out it seems to be. It's been thawing for 24 hours. Um, so it's had plenty of chance. Right, so I'm just going to basically go in here on the head. Come round the fin. I'm not used to doing salmon. I do lot, lots of trout, but I don't, I've never done salmon before actually. In terms of uh, filleting it, but it's just the same. So I'm going to run along the, the back here with a knife, making an incision around the, the bone. It is still slightly frozen, which actually probably makes it not too bad. Right. I'm going to try and poke this through here without going through my, my finger. I'll just come back up this way. Just cut those bones off. And then what I'm going to do is go down, follow the, the backbone down there. You do need a very sharp knife to do this and hence you have to keep your fingers well out of the way. There we go. And what we should have is one nice side of some. So that's the first one done. It'll need cleaned up. Right, we'll do that. Same on the other side. Right, what we've done now, we've cut a piece off here, which has a bit of freezer burn on. We're taking off these bones here, so it's uh, it's looking pretty decent. Uh, just taking off some of these other fins. And skin, chuck that away. I think that's just about ready. I'm just going to take the end off that tail as well. Just because that's too thin really to smoke and it's also not that brilliant. So I think we're looking pretty good there. There's a little bit there where it's got freezer burn. I'm just going to take a little bit off of there. I don't like the look of that. A 
bit too much, bit more water in here than I expected as well. Uh, obviously because it's been in the freezer for so long, so uh, it definitely needs a dry cure, a wet cure. This would be just no good at all. Um, but the, the dry cure should should dry dry this fish up quite nicely. Well, here we are. Here's the second fish now, the big one. So look at the size of that tail on there. That must have given him some great fight. I know he was trying for over an hour to get this one on the bank, and you can see why. It's just pure, pure muscle and some some amount of weight to it. My little uh, board that I use for large trout is is just dwarfed here. It only comes this far along to the salmon. So it's a bit of a task to do this. Right, I'm just going to clean up again. It's a bit slippy. But the other fish looks lovely. I've got the two, the two fillets. It's already done there. Look. Looking quite nice. So that's a fair bit of salmon. Right, so just the same again. Okay, so this is one side of the big salmon that we've got done. Uh, it's not the tidiest of jobs, but uh, it's not too bad, and it'll certainly be fine. Well, that's the uh, the second side of the big salmon, all prepped and ready. So uh, just got all the big bones off of here, and bits of skin. Take my fins off. Uh, so now I just have to decide how I'm going to put it into the. The brine. Okay what I'm going to do now is make up the brine. So I'm going to use a simple brine. It's four cupfuls of brown sugar to one cupful of salt, non-iodine salt. They're easily available and uh, you can get them out of Tesco and whatever. So it's this sort of stuff here, brown, light brown soft sugar. I'm just going to put that in there and pour in the salt. Right, let's see how that is now. So again, the salt just goes in. And I shall get my assistant to come in and mix it up for me. Hold that up to the camera for me, please. Yeah, one minute and just get to do that. Let me zoom in there. There's a little bit of white round okay. there, so I need to. Yeah, so it's got to be all mixed up nice and proper. There's just some white at the bottom. This piece of salmon has been cut up into pieces, so uh, I'll show you what we do with it next. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to put in some of the, uh, the brine mixture, a good coating in the bottom of the, the pan here. You need to use a, uh, a plastic or a stainless steel. Um, definitely not any other sort of metal, don't use aluminium um, because it can react apparently with the salt and the sugar. So that's what we do, just put in a nice simple base layer in there and then I'm just going to lay my fish in. So I've got each piece in there. 
and lay the fish in the brine. Still got a bit of attached there on the skin, so I'm just going to cut that off. Okay, that can come in. It's just about the right width, actually. This this uh, plastic container. Pick these up from the pound shop, so they ain't expensive. Four pieces of fish in there so far. You can see that. I'm just going to give that a good covering now with some more of the, the dry brine salute mix. Make sure you get plenty in among the cracks here, and it needs to be all round all over the fish. Now, what this brine is going to do, it's going to draw out the uh, the moisture, a lot of the moisture out of the fish, and it's also going to cure the fish. So it's going to go into this, and it's going to be in there overnight for about uh, 16 hours or thereabouts before it goes in the smoker. I put a good layer on there because I know this fish is quite wet after being frozen for so long. It certainly feels wet so I'm just hoping it's going to be alright. I think it will be. It looks a nice colour. So now I'm just going to put another layer on top. And that's just one side of fish. So another layer of the brine. And what will happen, this brine will all go to water in about two hours. One side of fish. Another three to go. Now we have got all the brining done. We've got three pots of salmon here. As you can see we've got it all covered with brine. Uh, you can see from the side of it there's some pieces there that aren't touching the sugar. So but this is all going to be turned into water fairly soon and what, what I will do after a couple of hours I'll take these out of the uh, probably out of a, a fridge or out of a, um, a cooled container like a cool box with some ice packs in. I'll take these out and I'll physically turn each of the fish so that they actually get into the brine solution because it's important that they do that. Um, so you can see it already it's starting to, to soak up. Of course this fish was very wet because it had been frozen previously. So uh, I put a good lot of brine on there We've used, it's actually taken two kilos of uh, brown sugar and uh, I guess about around about half a kilo of, uh, of salt. Lids will be going on onto these and then they'll go into a cool box which will be at about four to six degrees C um, and they'll be in there for 14 hours roughly. Um, and they'll take them out after about two hours and turn the fish so that each piece of fish is in contact with brine because where you get fish touching fish or fish touching the plastic then you need to uh, actually um, ensure that the brine gets onto the fish. And in true Blue Peter fashion I'm going to uh, put in a couple of ice packs in here that I prepared earlier. If I can get them in, there's not much room. I want to slide in there and I think I want to sit on the top. Put a lid on there and we'll leave those, leave those overnight. 
Right, we've left them overnight now, the fish, so uh, I'm just going to have a look at how they're getting on. I'm going to turn them. Here we go, ice packs. Right, there we go. As you can see, this is all, the brine is now totally liquid, or virtually, almost all liquid. Um, so I'm just going to turn them to make sure that all of the fish are in fact covered. My hands have been washed just in case you're wondering. Just turn them. You can see they're really, really stiffened up now. They're not floppy at all. So that's good. That means that they are getting towards being cured. That's all pretty gloopy stuff this. But yeah, they're all... All the way around the edges, they're fine. Yeah, there's still plenty of uh, sugar and salt mix in here, so that, that's good. Just doing this to make sure that they're not touching each other and uh, just so that they get properly cured. And that really is it. Just going to come back later on and uh, show you how to smoke. Okay, here I am just taking the fish out of the cooler. It's been there for uh, a good 16 hours now. So I'm just going to, it should be all watery as you can see there. It's looking pretty watery. So that, that's a good sign. I did turn it as we saw earlier. Put these over here. You should be able to see that the fish. Is now pretty pretty firm, so that's a good thing. I'm just gonna put that in the sink. Uh, what what I've done here, these are my smoker racks. It's a Pro Q smoker. I'm going to be using. So what I've done, I've got some of this nylon mesh, which is uh, non-stick. It's really quite good. I use it for other stuff as well, like sausages. So uh, we're gonna put the fish on top of the nylon mesh. I've cut it to the size of the smoker. So I've got my two racks there. I'm just going to simply, when I take this fish out of here, what I need to do is just, just get rid of the excess. There's, there's no need, and you certainly shouldn't wash this off. Just just get rid of the excess. Just by, just by doing that. That's simply enough. I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to do that with each piece. If you get big clods of it, then you might need to wash it off actually. But the idea is not to wash it off, just to scrape it off. fish is looking pretty good. So I'm just going to continue doing that and I'll come back to you when it's all done. Now I'm just rinsing off some of the excess. Now we've got some excess pieces on like this. It hasn't all dissolved away. I'm just rinsing that off under the tap. It's looking pretty good. Now we've got all of the, the salmon ready and I've actually filled up my, my smoke box here. This is my smoke box. So I'm using alder wood and I've actually put some water on that just to damp it down so that it gives you a longer burn and hence more smoke while you're doing that burn. Um, 
some of these ones I've, I've put on hangers so these will be fine too these have now got to dry here for about two hours just so they get uh, really firm and they should have it be a bit tacky when you touch them um, so that, that's really about it so it's only just about going to fit in the smoker because there's an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of fish here really what I'm doing now is I've set up a farm here. I've got the wife's farm from the gym upstairs. So uh, I'm just using that. I'm just going to sit there for about an hour, an hour and a half and dry out this fish. I'm going to use uh, a method called the minion method for fires. So I've got an upside down can in there. And uh, I'll just basically put this, this grill wrap. The idea is you want a, a long sort of slow burn, around about uh, three to four hours on this one. It's not too not too bad. Um, so I'm just making a bit of a hole in the middle there, and then what I will do is, is put some uh, briquettes in here and put some newspaper at the bottom. Few in there in the in the starter chimney. And this really does do the business. Uh, I'm going to put a couple of sheets of paper under there to light it. Right, well it's about time to light up the, uh, the chimney, so I'm going to just stuff a couple of sheets of newspaper under there. I'm just going to light her up and see how it goes. Concrete deck, so it isn't going to come to any harm. I should just leave that for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, maybe 20, and it should be glowing red. Right, what I've just done now, I've uh, put this thermostat through here, and this will go onto a little Maverick device so I can remotely monitor the temperature of the pit. So this is the, uh, the actual smoker temperature, it's just going to sit on there, on top of the nylon mat, which is fine. And on this one here, I've pushed the, the large um, temperature probe into the, the big chunk of salmon. So it's quite a thick piece, so that will tell me the temperature of the food. And I'll just connect these up when, uh, when I put it onto the fire. So the fire's coming along. It's nearly ready, another five minutes or so. The fish has really firmed up nicely. So we'll have to get uh, some of this ash there. Get out of the way of that. That's the ash coming from the uh, <laughs> from the bottom of the from the newspapers that went in. Um, so now I'm going to take the, the tin out. What, what I'll do is I'll pour the, pour the, um, the contents of the chimney into the centre of the fire and that will keep it going for a good long time so it'll burn from the in, in, inside to the outside. So it'll easily last three or four hours with that amount of charcoal. You can use charcoal or you can use the briquettes. I just find the briquettes don't drop through the grill as easy so uh, it's much more uh, much easier to, to, to use it. A lot of the charcoal you find in the bags is so small that it just drops through this central grill. I 
sure you don't trap the wires. Line it up, clip it on. Get a good seal. What we've, what we've got under here is a water bath. And that water is cold at the moment. And I want it to be cold on this particular smoke because uh, that's just going to regulate the temperature quite low. If it's meat you want it fairly high, but for fish you want it really quite low. No more than about 160F if you can help it. So that's what we're aiming at. So that's, that's that one in. And I'll put the other one on. And this will be up to temperature in no time. What I've done here, I've hung the, the excess fish, it's hanging underneath. So that's just going to hang and, and it will overlap a bit in the middle there, but so be it. I'm sure it'll be fine. Actually I could do that the other way around. I've got my gauge at the front. I can see the smoke's coming up already. That's just the charcoal smoke. I'll connect up my Maverick. So the lower one is the pit transmitter, so that goes in the barbecue. And the higher one is the food transmitter, so that goes in there. And that will just sit there and provide a remote feed into my house. And what I'll do once the pit gets up to temperature, and I'll put on this uh, older wood in this box here, the smoker box. It's actually wet, so I'm thinking I might put it on almost immediately, but uh, through this door here. It can start doing its business. And what I can do after a while, after we've been going for a while, I'll come back and check how that's burning and we'll just see how, how it goes. I might fill that up again with some more older, but we'll see how it goes. So that's it, just wait a bit now. Here we can see the, uh, the temperature on my remote. This is quite handy, you can see that the, the food temperature, the top one is 55F and the barbecue pit is 64F at the moment but it'll take, that's, that's just been put together so uh, it'll soon go up. Very handy these little maverick things, I definitely recommend that you get one. Certainly for meat, if you're doing any meats then you need these. Right, this has been going for some time now you can see it's dark so I'm just waiting to see what's happening in here there's my little box for putting the top lid in. And there we go, it's looking pretty good. I've got fish hanging here. Can you see the fish hanging under there? Okay, that's alright. I'll just put those on there for now. They're just going to sit there for a minute. Now I'm just looking at these to see how well they're doing. They've got good temperature on them and they're looking pretty good. So I'm just going to give them a bit of a, um, a go in now with some rub. I'm going to put some uh, 
maple syrup on these top ones to start off with. I'm just going to give them a coat of maple syrup just because it will give it a nice flavour and it will also give it a nice colour. So I'll just go around those with that. I'm going to do all this top lot with maple syrup. I'll do the second lot with honey. I'll give it like a nice glaze. getting pretty hungry now so these these are going to be on here for another half an hour just to finish off so the purpose of this is to uh, give it a good glaze a bit of flavor and it also gives something for black pepper to stick to. Which I'm going to do in a couple of these. So that's some with black pepper. I'm also going to do a couple with chili. Some chili flakes. So I'm going to do some with Indian Spice Garam Masala. I'm just going to drop a little bit of that on. That should give it a lovely, a lovely flavour. There we go. Not too much, just enough. And these will be smoked again for another half an hour or so. But first of all, I've got to do the ones at the bottom. So I'm just going to move this one down. It's not hot. It's pretty cold out here today. It's 6 degrees C. So it's definitely on the cold side. I'm going to do these ones with honey. True Scottish weather, we've just had uh, snow, <laughs> left us a little bit of snow, but uh, we're just going to get the rest of this off here now. So we're up to a decent temperature here, we're up to about 160. So I know it's, I know it's well cooked, take out the temperature probe, and now I'm going to lift the salmon out. I'm going to take the second lot of salmon out, just make sure I feed in my... Macro, macro, temperature pro, take that out, take off the top ring. There we go, there's the second lot of salmon. So if 
up that. That's looking lovely too. So here we are back where we started off last evening and we can see that the salmon has now gone full circle and uh, it's looking pretty good. I have already tasted a piece and it's extremely nice. So just about to get tucked into some more. So thank you for watching. I hope this has been a useful experience for you, as it has for me. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. Thank you.